All right, fellas and felonettes, welcome back to the Hot Damn Racing Team. If you are new to the channel, welcome. All right, you know, that was a shout out to my man Joey B, the taco, Joey the taco over at Hot Damn Racing Team and at Custom Black Motorsports. I'm going to put his links below. Check him out. He's got Custom Black Motorsports is funny. Hot Damn Racing Team is informative. They're both informative. Great guy. Uh, I'll leave the link below. Check it out. Subscribe to his channels. You'll uh, learn a lot and, you know, he's got a lot of stuff going on over there. All right, guys, today I am porch. Yeah, no, we're not on a porch. All right, listen, I had a long day today. We'll start over. <laughs> Today, we're going to start port matching. So these are the BES heads. Uh, they're ported. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to port these runners to match the ports, the intake ports on the heads. Because what you don't want, you know, if these are smaller and these are bigger, you're going to have turbulence, which is going to ruin your flow. And a lot of guys have these ported. Uh, maxed out ported and that's not good too because if the intake manifold runners are too big then you have turbulence as well so the best flow to not have turbulence we the scavenge that air is to have these the same exact size as these picture going down a slide like a, a, at a playground right going down a slide nice long slide and one of the sections is up two inches there's, there's a good example for you it would hurt it, it, it ain't gonna be good flow if all the sections are the same the flow is better just like your exhaust. Your exhaust should be all one size, usually smaller in the front, and then it gradually gets bigger, so the flow. But you get the idea. And I know a lot of you have different ways to do this. I have a Dremel. I'm going to show you the way I'm going to do it. If you guys have a, a better way, you can share it. That's cool. You know, don't push it, but you can share it. All right. My way, I have specific tools that I use, and this is how I'm going to do it. You know, there's always a better way to do things. We're living in a big world. But I'm going to show you the way I do it, and hopefully it helps you out. It's a simple way, and uh, hopefully it helps you know helps you out. You save a couple of bucks and do it yourself. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you're handy, you know I'm a carpenter. I do handyman services. I'm a contractor. I'm in construction. I do a, a lot of things on my hands. I'm very good at what I do. So this should be pretty simple for me. If you're not handy with your hands, I wouldn't touch this. Just leave it for, leave it for someone who's good with their hands. That's all. I, I would be careful. Uh, if you're going to do this for the first time, I go grab a, you know, a crappy intake manifold, a plastic one from a junkyard that you're going to throw away that you're not going to keep and test test your skills on there first before you start messing with the one you're going to install in your truck. All right, let me show you guys um, how I'm going to line these holes up. Let me get my caliper out. I'm going to take a bunch of measurements on each one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those, those measurements over to here. These, again, these taper. They go big to small. This is the top. This is the bottom big to small so i'm going to take a bunch of measurements marking out and get a marker either have a i either have a silver marker or a uh, a white marker somewhere i gotta find it and i'm gonna mark it out the amount i have to take off then i get the dremel out and i'm gonna take off what i need to take off and that'll be port matched i'm also gonna go down a little more maybe about an inch an inch or so depending on how far the dremel lets me go down just to open it up as much as i can you know to keep it continuous rather than having just this mouth open. I'm going to try to go down about an inch or two. And on the throttle body, um, I think the Fastman 84 millimeter throttle body is the exact same size as this. I might have to open this up a tiny bit, but as long as it's matched to my throttle body, I'm leaving it. But I'll, I'll check that too. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm removing the runner gaskets and dropping the fuel reel. I'm going to take the injectors out because you don't want to get them clogged up. Fuel reels off, injectors are out. I gotta pop these gases out too before I start, but let me start with the throttle body. I measured the throttle body of the Fastman, it's around 83.75 millimeter. This is exactly the same. It's a, I went, you know, tried different points, and it's a, what, I'll, what I'm gonna do is just kinda open this up a tiny bit and go inside here. I don't know if you can see those, these factory cast lines in there. See them? that kind of protrude a little bit probably like a 64th which can cause you know a little turbulence so i'm gonna clean this out 
a little bit, just a quickie, and then stick it in there and clean all these little lines in here so it's nice and smooth. I got the caliper out, and uh, I love this little caliper. I got this thing for like, I don't know, 30 bucks over at uh, Harbor Freight. It's pretty sweet. So what I did was I, I measured with a taper starts the, the larger opening on this head and the other head. And that would be on this side. This is, flips over, goes on that side. So this is the tops on these and it tapers down to the bottoms. I measured the bottoms as well. And I got my caliper out. And uh, what I did was, like say this, this is 49.4. Line up at the center of the hole and made marks with that marker. So I did, I marked the top and the bottom, top, bottom. And I got my marker and I followed that taper line nice and steady. So that shows you what I got to take off. The good thing is, I don't have much work to do because the height on this is like maybe 0.20 uh, smaller than this. So I don't need to mark this. I'm just going to give it a quick shave just to open the top and bottoms up. So I don't have much work to do. I don't have much work to do at all. There's factory lines in here. I'm gonna show you about, you can feel them. That can cause a little restriction. So that's it. I got it all marked out. What I also did, because what happens is you're not sure where it, how that hole right there on the head lines up with this hole. You know, could this hole be up a little bit? Like up a little bit, down a little bit. So I got a straight edge and I got the center point on these two bolts. And then got a straight edge here on those two bolt holes. And put a straight edge here in the center of those two bolt holes. And it, it's exactly the same. It's exactly centered, this hole with that hole. So that's good. Here's my marks. I'm going to start, get the Dremel out and start going at it. If you guys are wondering what marker I use, it's a Sharpie paint marker. It's got like a ball on it. It's almost like spray paint, but it comes out in a marker. It's got a good tip on it. I don't know where I got this from. I had this from years ago, a couple years ago, and I'm finally got a use for it. I've seen guys use uh, silver Sharpie markers. Anything that gives off a paint, it's, it'll stay wet for a little while, but once it dries, it ain't going anywhere. So when you're buzzing out, you know, you know exactly where to stop. All right, so I just did one. I did this one pretty quick. I took, went right to the line just to get the opening where I want it. Then I'll start going gradually down just to kind of smooth it out. That's the first one. I also got the caliper out and uh, I checked it. It's it's right on the money. This is just a little, I didn't want to go too much. I knew I put too much marker there, but it's fine. I got the Dremel uh, 4000. This is what came with the kit, these ones. I got these for my hand drill if I need them to go down a little deeper and on different angles. This one, 502 is uh, five, number 502, uh, 80 grit, 80 grit flap wheel. These things are awesome. I'm going to use this on the throttle body, but I did use this at first just to get the, the lines done first. And this little tip that came with the, came with the Dremel 4000, this little bit, this thing's like the perfect size for the, these turns right here. It works out good. I'll set up the camera so you guys can watch me do one. I don't know the number on this one. This is the one that came with the kit. Get this thing to focus. But yeah, it's just the Dremel 4000. That's it. Thing works sweet. I keep it on around 25 on speed, 25. You don't want to go too fast because the plastic heats up and it's gonna, it'll start gumming up. You don't want to temper it. So 25 is good. I think it's a good speed for me. You know, depends on your speed and how you're working too.
first wheel I like to use is this one, the flap, like I said before, the 80 grit uh, sand wheel flapper, flap wheel. You gotta be careful with this because this can this digs pretty quick. So I like to get the majority of what I can with this. And then slap this little guy on. This does my corners, helps me uh, open up anything else I need around there. Then I slap this one on my drill at high speed number two. This is like a, it's a stone. What it does is, if I can focus in here, here you go. It's a stone. And this can get down about, I don't know, an inch and a half, three quarters of an uh, inch and three quarter. And uh, kind of fines everything up for me, smooths it out really good. And then I guess I'm a, I just get a scour pad afterwards. I soak it in some uh, throttle body cleaner and I like to spend about a minute just going around and just smoothing everything up as far down as I can. And these ones are all set. I'm going to do the other side right now. So here's my favorite little guy. This is uh, just a little bitty wire wheel. And what you might do when you're doing this, you might create a little lip here as you're pouring this out. And if you do, this just takes off the lip and kind of gets rid of the burrs. Nice and lightly. Nice and lightly. So these are all ported. The runners are fully ported. So they have port matched to the heads. I mean, it took off a good amount of material. Most of it's on the floor too. But I say it's about a quarter cup of plastic, yeah? About a quarter cup. So we took off a good amount of material. It's gonna help the airflow. Maybe give me a little more horsepower. It's gonna make that air go through the throttle body, go through the intake runners, get into those heads, and shoot right out to the damn tailpipe. These intake runner openings are port matched to the BES heads. They're all done. And what I'm gonna do now is, uh, oh, I wanted to let you guys know too, I was doing this by hand. It takes a minute or two to really smooth them out. Uh, they sell wheels of this scour pad, which I ordered that aren't here yet, of course, they take it forever from Amazon. Uh, I would, um, that's what I would recommend if you, instead of doing it by hand, because after you do the scour pad, it's really smooth. Some throttle body cleaner just to kind of clean it up as you're doing it, it makes it nice and smooth. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the little wheels are better than doing it by hand. Either way. All right, let's do the uh, throttle body hole. So I'm not going incredibly big here. I'm going to, this is going to be just a quick whiz. Go in here and try to get rid of these factory lines. Maybe cause some drag. You can feel them. I'll buzz those out. This, I got a new one of these two I'll be replacing. I have all new gas that's going on this, but. All right, let's buzz it out. This I don't have to mark. I'm just gonna do a few rotations to sand it down as I know roughly how far, how big I'm going. So I buzzed out my initial opening. I buzzed it out, went around continuously and gradually and evenly. And I'm at where I wanna be. I'm a little, slightly bigger than my throttle body, just a little tiny bit. I'm right around 84 millimeter. Cause the throttle body is only about, I think 83.7, 83.8, so. A little bit bigger then i go in a little more with the flap wheel the sander and just kind of clean up these lines and gradually make this opening i'm gonna pull it in more like that now they do have bigger uh sanding flap wheels for these uh, i think one guy i was watching on youtube used a three inch that would be easy especially if you do a lot of digging and a throttle body opener this is just a little baby one it does the trick you could literally literally use a rat tail file if you're good at using a rat tail file and port this thing It'll take like five hours but you could do it you know, there are many things you can use there's different tips you can use you can use ceramic you can use stone you can use sand uh flap non-flap uh flaps better because it lets the plastic the plastic doesn't stick to it it lets air in between them but you gotta be careful with the flapper because you can do some digging if you're not if you're not careful <laughs>
What's good about these stone ones too, you just, if they clog up, if they clog up a little bit, you just grab your wire brush before. Fold them backwards a little bit, like good as new. This is a ceramic stone. This one's really smooth. After the the more coarse stone, you use this little ceramic one and it makes it really smooth. I'm gonna get my scour pad because I don't have any wheels, so I'll do it by hand and scour the crap out of this thing. Here's your throttle body opening. I went in about three inches. I gotta air this thing out, clean it out good, but that is port matched. Slightly bigger, maybe like oh, half a millimeter bigger than the uh, throttle body. But that is port matched to my 84 fast man with throttle body. So there you have it guys. Porting a plastic intake manifold. This is the 6.4 truck intake manifold. Ported, uh, not totally ported. It's not max ported. It's just port matched to my, my heads. All right, guys, if I'd say if you know what you're doing somewhat, I don't do this all the time. I do it. This is probably my, my second time I've ever done something like this. You can, as many tools you can use. You can use a stone head that can go in your drill, quarter shaft. And then you have your Dremel stuff you can use. Uh, they do make small flaps in this. They make like little half inch ones. They make bigger ones, two inch, three inch, four inch. But this is what I had. This is what I used, even this little stone. This thing worked sweet. Did a lot of, it did good. Did a good job. This drum sanding, a little mini drum sander, not so much. Uh, it worked good for like a couple, <laughs> about a minute, and it started catching plastic and then started gumming up. So I tried it at low speeds, high speeds. It wasn't the best. But for, for what I have, the two best things are either the stone, a ceramic stone, which you could do last, little wire wheel. That thing was sweet. It really cleaned up the burrs and stuff. Got rid of the lip on top of the, the runners. Again, there could be 50,000 tools out there. Uh, some guys like to use specific ones. These, this is what I had in my shop. So, so that's what I used. I utilized what I have. Didn't cost much at all either. Are there quicker and faster ways, better ways? I'm sure there are. But all we're doing is removing plastic. That's what we're doing, ultimately. Removing plastic, gradually going deeper and getting it smooth. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I think finally we might get the heads in soon. <laughs> have a good one. See you.